Hello and welcome back to the channel and today we're looking at Crashing Steam Golf Club by MBT Ma MVP Manatee. Sorry. Um, now Jack has said a couple of things like he obviously really struggled with uh, crashes during this, hence the name, um, which I can really sympathise with. Um, and so he didn't get as much time to play test as he'd like. He would therefore like us to bump greens down to moderate for judging purposes. We'll go everything else as default. We can go pin four. Um, and let's kick things off. Um, now, features two holes without a bunker, three and nine, course without OB or water, and a template choice lion's mouth on the eighth. Um, and I think based on, oh, what's the course called? There's a core and Crenshaw one. I know the one. It's, um, anyway. Um, Mountainside course, really cool bunkers, lots and lots of width. No light rough is an interesting choice. There's always one where I just think you should have it really on CC. Generally, like for slight misses, it's worth it. Very open. Um, the one thing I would have tried to avoid would be the little single pines. I think they look a bit odd from a distance, whereas if you clump them together like you've done a bit more down here, they look better. Um, the plot's really cool, raised up nicely. We've got some dips and ravines and things. Makes the, the no OB interesting because you're going to have to be careful for people not to go down those. You can't really put it too close um, or we're ending up with potential issues. Um, I think the bunkers look really, really good. The texture choices are great. Um, they pop nicely. Big greens by the looks of it. And there is a clubhouse. It exists. <laughs> which given what he was experiencing i'm not totally surprised and it's accessible by helicopter because of posters um i always like this kind of plot where it's really high up and you've got the haze and you're kind of playing at kind of at fog level i think it's a cool look um so yeah here we go right the first hole so immediately we're tempted to take on down to here and we are going to have recovery shot options from down there, which, like I say, you're going to get issues with the low heavy rough. One thing I think you've got to be super careful of if you're doing this sort of thing is that this here to here has to be flat um, because you don't want people landing just in the fairway and careering down into here, which is not ideal. Um, there's a little centerline tree thing, which I guess just forces us a little bit closer to here, but not too much. Um, but for this pin, we want to be hitting far oh, this way. Well, we can kind of go either way. I don't think it matters too much. Bunkers look good. Um, a nice wide fairway. We're about to test that rolling into the... Yeah. There you go. It's kind of a... Is that the experience you want players to have? Is that... If I've taken on that tiger line, I'm not a person who always believes that you land in the fairway so should end up in the fairway but there are a significant number of people who do believe that um, and it's also is that necessarily yeah, I guess the question is is that how you want it to play and we're going to miss the green as well I'm interested to see where this one stops because it looks like this fairway runs us straight into the heavy rough as well yeah so again, just flattening up the bottom of these so that there is a collection point rather than just you've missed by a little, therefore you missed by loads. Because um, actually that fairway is not really helping us at all. That's running us further away. This is a very... Wrapping stuff in fairway can always look like it's friendly, but it isn't necessarily. Mm, yeah, it's okay. Partly also the length of shot I was coming in at. Well, we're going to make an absolute hash of this first hole. Now, the green itself, I know you had some concerns as to how quick they played. It's big. The slopes are appropriate. This works nicely for CC. I don't really think you need a false front tucked in behind with the bunker as well. We talked about this on previous courses of yours, but chucking a false front for no real reason is probably your worst bad habit because that's taking away a potential shot and it's protecting 
something you're already protecting with this. Um, yeah. All right. About three second across the ravine is a nice way of using it because people are very unlikely to hit into this part of it. So it's much better on a path three approach where you can control the length and particularly where it's a short path three approach. Hmm. I'm not sure you need the big kicker slope on a short par 3. That feels more akin to like a 7 iron or below. I do like this little bowl. This slope feels great. This one just a little odd. And a bunkerless hole. Not one that you chose as one of yours. So 3 was the one you'd suggested. Let's see if we can get that shot back. Big views are gorgeous, look really nice. And I think just seeing those little trees down on the left of the green there, it would have been really nice to see those blended in a bit more with the other planting rather than just having these little spruces dotted around the main plot. Um, I'll just leap back to the green and explain what I meant. Uh, where was it? <coughs> Yeah, even like the stock boreal trees, like these ones, if those are blended in well, they look really, really good. It's just when the only tree we're getting is these diddy spruces. It, it just looks a little bit... One here, one here, one here, one here. Like, it, you can do some slightly different stuff and vary it a bit more. But I guess that's also partly to do with the amount of crashes you had would have affected the planting quality, I'm sure. Okay, bunkerless hole, like this one. So the big mound obscuring the green pushes us a little further left, but I think this is going. This pin's going to be blind no matter what I do. So it's kind of a question of how much do I want in. Oh, I'm defaulting to three wood. I'd explain that. So I can hit up into this neck. I can. I don't think anyone on CC is really using this little bit of fairway. It's just a touch too narrow. Um, but they could, and it's very risky, and it would give a reward of playing into that bowl. I think I'd probably make this just a little wider to make it a bit more accessible. But because um, you're taking on a lot of risk, I'd also probably be cutting down a few of these trees, if it just or placing them a little lower down here, I think would generate a much better sightline. Like the first hole where we were looking across the canyon was really good. And these are kind of muddying the sightline a little. I'm just going to play somewhere out here. Let's go relatively safe. And I like the uneven stances as like a, not even a half, well, yeah, I guess it is kind of a half shot penalty. Like it's tricky to control. Yeah, so that one's lapped out way further left, and as a result, we're down the bottom of the tier. It's not really, it's not posing me a problem to par, but it works out quite nicely. Admittedly, I had a poor swing plane as well. But you're not taking away a birdie shot it's from me, it's just significantly more difficult than had I hit my tempo. What we like. On green side. Um... Yeah, I don't have many comments on that one. I like the green as well. Okay, par five. It's a long par five. I don't understand why we need this bunker, because it's blocking the view of the other two. And if you are having a center line here, probably a small one would be better. It just blocks your land landing zone visual for no real reason. This green's massive. Wow. Um, so we hit down here and it hopefully bounces and we get a little bit of a view. I really like the little mounds here. I think given the crashes you had, it's a shame because I think there's a lot of sight lines that would have benefited from kind of just a once over. Um, and I'm going to assume from the types of grass these are that these are autogen. Which, again, is a little bit of a, eh, what could have been. 
because this planting I could see really popping. Doesn't look necessarily too bad. But actually, kind of like autogen planting kind of works. And apologies if it is not autogen, it just looks that way. Um, all right. So again, we've gone. If it, if you are missing right on a long approach here, this is kind of where we would need OB. So like, whilst you put OB as one of your and the required elements don't really matter too much, I don't think. But this is where I would be using OB because you're basically saving people from making a really bad decision that then means they can't get back up. Because if they do hit down there and they fail to hit back up you're facing a lot of shots to get all the way back up um yeah long 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 green i think you could have gotten away with probably two-thirds of the size of this it could still be big it's just not huge um and i think pins wise one where i'm at currently one there one back right probably i would really hope there's not one in here just because I think that's too quite an area, even though there's lots of helping slopes, it would just feel a touch gimmicky. The mini golf star. Uh, one, three, two. B, and the putter goes one, three, four. Right, okay. As far as we can, then. Yeah. This is kind of the problem with really big greens and then lowering the slopes. Like, that's me hitting as hard as I can. Even close to being there. One thing to be wary of. Oh, and we're not even going to make a oh. and That's an annoying bogey. Bunkers here present really, really nicely. Um, again, I'm sure a result of crashes, but I think you could be tying in this underbrush planting a bit better into like either it's really heavy down here and it just gradually fades away as you go out would be my preference or there's little clusters but again like having little bits close to area of play but nothing under the trees strikes me as which is the area that's definitely not maintained strikes me as a little odd um oh, back to back fives so these bunkers purely framing just uh hit up somewhere along here Okay, and a little bit of a, I like this little dip, because that's, like, that's never lost ball territory, but that's a tricky recovery shot. Um, ball to run, and comments of the previous one, you don't need it, it's preventing the shot that you're trying to help, really. But this, this slope definitely helps us. Um, probably the five iron is the play. Oh, I've gone over it. This is a fun miss. I like the amount of fairway that's meant that we've rolled a bit further away. And then, like, this sort of shot, I think, is really challenging because I've missed the helping slope and now suddenly that's working away from me. Like, this is the sort of design I love. Right? Right, in real life, this would be a nightmare of a shot to play. In game, we can spin it, but. Yeah, let's control no delight. The other thing with your false front is the green then flows front to back. So, and this is one that I've seen you do a couple of times where it's just like you're now requiring a huge level of precision because you're not just asking people just to run the ball up and carry it, but also not go too far because then they're running further and further and further away. If you are ever doing a false front, you cannot have a front to back green with one or two exceptions um the obvious one i think for me would be third at royal melbourne west which is an awesome short par four but it's all predicated on carrying a pitch shot and like encouraging people to lay back in that position i think you've got to be really careful doing that two over and i wouldn't say that's because the course is overly difficult i'm just playing really badly um okay downhill par three <clears throat> You'll have seen this critique a ton before, but the view I get from here 
is so much better than the view I get from here. So we want to either shift the tee box up or lower the land in front of me. Because um, you've done a lot of nice planting work down in this little dip. It would be really cool to see that because that, otherwise it's just, it's not the same. And this one we're playing with elevation change a little bit more and there's some cool bowls and run-ins. I probably want a little bit more fairway this side. And like you could probably afford to shrink the green a little bit. Keep the fairway the same width. But like if you're hitting this bit of fairway, you're not needing this. You're running way through anyway. What you want is for people to bounce the ball on the fairway and have it trickle onto the green a little bit more. Um, I don't love the pin just the other side of the diagonal spine, I have to say. I feel like... I think occasionally we can get people thinking, well, the obvious pins are one, two, three, four. How can I do something that's not obvious and putting it in a spot that just... that there's a reason it wasn't obvious? I just think playing over this doesn't feel... It just brings in an element of randomness as to where I'm bouncing, even if, yeah, I mean, it's not a big slope. Maybe that's just a me thing. Feel free to ignore that comment, if you will. Mm. At the distance. Yeah, and again, the little bit of fairway apron around the back is kind of negligible. And it's almost running away here because yeah, I think we could use just a bit more friendliness behind the green. Right, it's great that we are using fairway apron. Just let's be really generous with it and realize that fairway apron for that, like a lot of fairway apron can mean you shrink your actual green size. This is a good look opportunity. like this one a lot. Um. I would probably like some sort of aiming point off the tee um, and would also like probably this fairway not to cut in here where, where I'm aiming. So just a little bit right. If I were laying back with three wood because I don't know what's coming. Um, but as is. Oh, there we go. Tees hazard, hits into hazard. Tail as old as time. Okay. That's a shame because this is a, quite a fun green complex, but I'm hitting into it with zero control. And you've also it's also one of the few where you've completely taken away the ground game, but kind of because this hazard was here, you're always going to end up with a few people who are doing that into it. And that's the danger of taking away of completely blocking off the entrance to the green. Like if you could have moved these bunkers so one of them is one side, one of them is the other. I appreciate this is very much hit a better shot, but there will be other people who end up down there. Yeah, and you get a very variable lie and struggle continues. Okay, hole eight. Again, really like how the bunkers present from the tee. Up close, sculpting could use a little work. Um, particularly that third one and the way you're getting to... Yeah, sculpting on the third one is not great. It's often the case with a string of bunkers because actually you need to lower the land from here rather than propping this one up and take a big... So I take a big brush where the epicenter is here, the third one on page one, edge of the fuzziness is over here, and lower from here, and then they would all kind of gradually fall into line, and you can sculpt them a bit more naturally. Um, the little ravine entering into the fairway is cool. Like, I really like some of the funky land that you've got here. Oh, and there's that horrible slow swing again. So on this hole, far less punitive. Okay. 
utterly blinding, but nothing, nothing you can do about that. Same thing with the fairway around the back of the green. Like here, I'd probably be bringing the green in a little bit. You maybe push your fairway up to here, but you want about, I'd say, that much. So there to this point of fairway, really, I would say. I think you just need to be allowing a little bit more generally than you are. Not the worst shot I've hit. And the course is definitely one of the toughest that I have been judging, for sure. Um, I haven't really been commenting much on the greens. I, I think they work. They're quite big for the most part. And also I've had my problems with mi missing tempo, so that's been part of it. Okay, this is another one of our bunkerless holes. Um, it is bunkerless. It's not, it's not my favourite hole, it's kind of just, you hit down, and then you're hitting a wedge into a propped up green. But yes, it's bunkerless, and yeah, the knoll is probably a good choice to go for a bunkerless green site. Almost, yeah, to be honest, I think this one probably could have used a few bunkers. Um just to make me think on the tee shot, or you bring in the ravine would have been the obvious way of doing it. Something along those lines. Or more fairway undulation than there was. I don't know, I think you need something on that tee shot. Green slopes with this one are much more CC appropriate. Like, there's clear sections to the fairway and that mound in the middle makes add some interest. One of my key criteria is always, can you hit the centre of the green? Like, not always, but like, what would happen if I hit the centre of the green and just, if I'm playing in real life and I aim dead centre of the green, where would I end up? Like, for this green, it's going to give you some really dicey shots, which isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world, but I think your little puff that you're going for here, those tend to be a little bit smaller than this, um, which which can generally lead to, I, I think I'd probably just flatten out this bit, or you have like the little circular roll and then everything around it's quite flat, just giving it a wide berth. I'm not saying this one is a disaster by any means, it's far from it, just I think a little tweaking of that would, would improve it. Um, again, the bunkers here frame really nicely. I'm going to guess that this is one of the holes you did first because it's fully planted and everything. Same thing with the sight line though, we can we can show more of that than we are. This tempo is getting worse and worse. Well, we're playing this one as a three-shotter. I like the game taking my dreadful shot and defaulting me to a three-pitching uh, wedge. Right. Yep, you're not very good. Let's just back up the middle of the fairway, shall we? Okay. Really cool look here. Oh, hey, this green is something I do not particularly like the spine across the middle I have to say it just feels really man-made and artificial in a way that a lot of this course doesn't and like there's big bunkers and things and there's lots I like but this is very harsh Kind of the same with the bowl, the bowl effect. Like it's really severely down and then flat, whereas I think you can do this all more gently. And again, I think with playtesting, you'd have been able to find a lot of that. But there's quite a lot of severe red to green. Um, now, if I were hitting a three wood into this, which is what we'd have hoped to, I'm going to assume you've got a pin down here. If so, this slope... I. Again, don't really like it because there's no margin for error. You are hitting this exact spot, like running it in here, or up here, kind of dead, down here, dead. I think what I would be doing is taking this contour and moving it a bit further short of the green. That would increase the forgiveness coming onto the green. Because I think what what are your contours like this for? They're for adding forgiveness and like margin for error. 
Yeah, I think it's just about those helping contours really allowing for ground game. And looking at this slope, this slope takes you away. It would be cool to provide that sort of shoot that you're going for, just not on the green, like short of it. And then that's a great strategy. And just a little bit more, I guess, more gap between those two so that it allows you to funnel more shots close to the pin. Because that's really what you're trying to do with this. Um, down 17 feet, but into the wind, those probably equal each other out. Really red stance, somewhere over there, not enough. We're going to end down in that little section. Which, I mean, we don't really deserve a birdie par after how we've been playing, so that's fine. Oh, and yeah. Oh, there we go. Maybe that turns it around a little bit. I think there's a lot of holes on this course that had you not had to deal with the crashes, you're probably getting a much, much better outcome because the stuff you would have redone. Okay, planting here is much, the sight line is much, much better. That works well. Uh, 194 yards up 27 feet to this green. Um, this one needed a redo. So again, why are we putting a false front on here? Because you're requiring, and you've done again the same thing where it's a false front going to a green that slopes away. I don't get why this one slopes away. But any pin up here is really difficult. Like, that's elite level, if not pretty close to plats because of the length of club you're coming in at. Um, this pin, I've got to just carry this bunker. And you're asking TC players, some of whom are going to be complete beginners, to carry this bunker, work out the elevation change, account for the wind, not go too far. There's a little more forgiveness if you go over this side, but they're almost certainly then dealing with that downhill putt, which in itself is fine, but it then slopes away pretty hard after the pin. Um, to the back pins, we are carrying... Probably a five wood, maybe a three iron. And again, we've got a run off at the back and the ball runs away. Like, if, you're going, if this is your longest par three, you've got to be building in forgiveness all over the place, not the hurting slopes. I don't mind the look off the tee. I think I would probably stagger these bunkers a little bit more. So have one low, probably this one lower. That would allow you a bit more view of the green and see the green sweeping out that way. They just look a little horizontal, like that dead horizontal line, something you've really avoided so far, and you've staggered your bunkers really nicely. It's just happened here a little bit more. I mean, there's no way we get this close, I don't think, other than sheer luck. Okay, so look, we landed the ball short of the green, and we're up on the tier, and that's my reward. This is more than... This one's a little bit more than playtesting. This one's a concept thing of just like, yeah, you'd have probably picked this up with playtesting, but the concept of this, I've barely touched that part, is just not close to CC. Um, and I'd argue that's not, that's a whole I'd be redoing whatever tour I was going for. Like if you're going for plat level, you can accomplish the same thing, but in a friendlier way. Okay, that one was a bit of a shame. That's, yeah, the whole I've, not liked it's the only one i've really not liked i'd say um okay bunkers look lovely again here they present really really well i enjoy all of the feeder slopes on here they're big and bold you can play up to this side yeah and there's that gentle diagonal ridge that's feeding balls this way uh, how long was this hole off the tee? 460. Feels like a longer par 4. But I appreciate that you've allowed more ground game access. This one feels like it could have been, like if you'd moved this green maybe 30 yards back, like this could have been a really good hole as well. It's There's a lot of stuff to feed um, approach shots off, which is always fun. And again, not complaining that it's slightly shorter because when I miss my approach shot, I'm only pulling a 9-iron and not something. 
the one thing I'm noticing, like part of the reason I think I'm playing much more is here, like the side hill lies you're getting on the fairway are pretty severe. Um, and therefore, I think when you do that, you really have to tone down your margin for error on the greens and just give way, way more. So I think when if you were getting people commenting on how difficult the greens were, I don't think it's the putting that's getting to them. I think it's the approaches combined with where we're then aiming for. Um, okay, so shorter par three. This bunker needed a little bit more work. I think partly it's dropping this bit of land, raising up the middle of it. Just that's there's a good 10 minutes more sculpting or so needed around this to make it work because you've sculpted the bunker itself pretty well it's just how it sits in the land looks really stark because this is a very sheer drop off and that's going even more and then you just it's not quite sitting in harmony with the rest of the land um, as for the green we've got kind of a crowned pin so running front and then running away um, with your next course, whenever it is, I would really be careful about how many pins, how many slopes run away from the pin, because we've had a, had a fair few that don't need it. And also that classic of it rolls forward and then it rolls away immediately and you're putting a pin here. Um, on a short par three, I'm less concerned by this, but in real life, it would still be very frustrating to play, I think. I say still, it would be very frustrating to play. I'm not playing it too frustrating at the moment. Um, okay. I'm trying to think for other pins. Back left is kind of all carry, which works. Two in the middle, maybe? Generally, this hole is just, it feels like it's fighting the land a little bit. Right? And in trying to do this little drainage bit, it's caused a lot of sculpting stuff on this side that doesn't quite work. You can see from here how it's dipping in. And I think with a hole like this, just like, I would probably cut the green down because you've gone through your rise up to the green. And a lot of it is to house this bunker. Um, cut the green down, a couple of smaller bunkers halfway down the hillside so that the green is kind of fitting in with your general slope because at the moment it's going here here sharp if you cut your green a little bit further down that's more in line with your diagonal and i think that will look a whole lot better and present really nicely because you've got a great spot for a hole here um i think the routing is spot on it's just that where you exactly where you're putting it and then the fact that it's sloping front to back is again causing some more angular stuff because of the severity that it is Okay, suddenly loads of bunkers. And it's because we've got the other green in there as well. I think purely visually, quite hard to do. Seeing those bunkers on the other green is then really off-putting off the tee. It looks very busy, when in fact it isn't. Um, I'd have wondered whether you needed these two bunkers on this hole. Three bunkers on this hole. Plus, I think with the changes I would have suggested to the bunkering down here, I, I'd have just reconfigured the bunkers between these two. Um, this green's fun. We like this. Okay. Um, I mean, three wood is definitely to play. And we remember to complete our downswings. So that's good. I might have liked a little bit of an aiming mark or a dip between these two so that you can see the green from or the flag from some places but not from others. An aiming marker is always a good rule of thumb. We can. Uh, up 22. Something like that, maybe? Yeah, that's in the right sort of ballpark. I think this pin works well because it's in a little bit of a bowl, which meant that you saw the calculations that I'm having to do, and I'm someone who's kind of used to playing the game and thinking about these things. I'm not so sort of good at it, but for your CC player, they don't necessarily know those, so you've got to build in forgiveness on the greens. So I'm hoping pins are here, there's one here, there's one here, and there's one somewhere in the fat part of the back. Um, 
and I think this green therefore works so so much better than a number of the others because of like conceptually there's that forgiveness really built in. Back to even bar, it's taken a while. This one looks lovely. Um I think this is one of the ones you probably built first. The bunker shapes are kind of interesting in that they're kind of going for this sort of stuff, and then there's occasional rectangular just blocks, which actually don't look... I think they kind of work, but they are a bit... I, want, I, th I don't think they look bad, but I wonder whether they could look better, these ones, because they do look different to the others. Um... Okay, this pin we have some questions about. Because it's on a tight shelf already, and when you then couple that with the front to back sloping nature and a runoff behind it, we're asking for too much. Um, and all, all the good stuff I said about the previous hole, like bottle that, and it's the reverse. And we've kind of pinched the tee shot a little bit as well. So it's not an automatic tee shot, which is fine. We don't like automatic tee shots. Um, you've given us loads of, loads of fairway to play with. So I guess the better angle to that one is sort of out here. I'm shooting dead down it. So playing closer to that bunker. So I think the angle play works nicely. And I imagine every pin elsewhere on the screen works just fine. I'm not, I don't get what this is or why it's there. Um, if I'm honest. I would just, I would lose it. But yeah, this is then just really high tariff. Especially because the fairway is going to be doing lots of sloping, which is going to push people marginally offline. So like, I'd say the narrow shelf on its own is probably a bit too narrow to house a pin. Um, if you cut the fairway, the green out to here, that's better. But in the fairway, right, the green right in the tight part, when you can't really land it too far short, I guess that's what we're encouraging, but like it don't get me wrong, it's doable. It's about the level of forgiveness and the like penal nature of if you can't hit that shot, then what? And yes, you could have played to the fat of the green and had the putt up. It's just I don't really want to get people playing that defensively on a CC course, really. Okay. Um Okay, drivable par four. I think you're kind of always going for it if you have the longer driver. I'm trying to work out if you need this bunker. I would have lost this bunker. I don't think it really adds anything. I guess the only reason in real life that I'm not going for that green is because I can't see it. If Other than the fact that I can't carry it 305 yards in real life. Um, it just feels like a bit of an auto drive, a full hole, which we want to try to avoid. Um, again, I'm not sure I love the false front. This one I don't mind it as much. I think it's odd that it ends in green texture, which therefore potentially means you're landing down here and having a putt straight up it. Like if over here, that gives people the option to putt or chip. And I do like that if you did bail out, like if you hit driver down here, then suddenly you've got that white pitch to that sort of a look. Rather than if you laid up down the right hand side, you're looking more down the throat of the green, that's good. The runoff on the far side of the green also supports all of that. Yeah, I'd have just lost that little fairway bunker. And see it now. Just overhit it because I knew I hadn't read enough. We're under par. We can't ask for much more after the start we had. Okay, 17 presents nicely off the tee. 
Um, I'm going to call this a bit of, I'm going to assume this is a little bit of a casualty of you running out of time and crashes and willpower. It's, it's solid. It's, I don't think it's a hole to get particularly excited about it. Kind of, it's there, it's functional. Not really doing a lot more for me, if I'm being completely honest. It's hard because it's on one of the less inspiring pieces of land. What I might be tempted to do just for visual variety would be to put in a few more trees, like little, could you have a little copse of trees or something here or something to make it look a little bit different. Like with the open courses, that looks great, but it can wear on you a little the more you go on. Okay, 18. Bring us home strong. Long par four. Big green. Okay, so we've got a bit of a narrow, so we either take on driver or we lay back. Let's say for argument's sake we lay back. And we are downwind, so laying back is not too punitive. So I've got a six iron. So we've basically just got to carry this bunker, really. Again, I don't really know why we're doing green if we're going to put a little bit of a false front on it. I, because if you're hitting to here and you roll basically all the way off the green, I know what was the point of this. Um, now I think what we're trying to do is funnel balls all the way down here, but I'm not, which is kind of why I wanted to lay up. I'm not really sure that's going to work in practice because it's diagonally going the wrong way. Like if you look at where this slope is, it's going that way, which is just going to feed balls off. Whereas had we worked it out this way, that then allows you to on all the ball round, which I think is more what would have made sense. Um, similar comments as to previous ones with your punch bowl, like it's providing a tiny bit of forgiveness for shots that go maybe five inches too far. What it's not doing is it allowing people to hit into an area, which is what a punch bowl really wants to be, and like n have that confidence to believe it's going to go back. Um, as a result, I think we're just going to hit I was trying to hit a partial six, and I've got all of that. Hit into an area. I think this could have been a really, really good finisher. Um, I would have loved to have seen you use the broken land a little bit more. Like the land nine sits on, and nine wasn't necessarily my favourite, but like the land that's got is much more dramatic for a finisher than what we've got here, which is kind of a, a nine, six iron approach, really, even with laying up. I was hoping by laying up it would give me a bit more drama and hitting in. Oh, there's a there's a part at least. So there we are. Um, now, the caveat obviously was that we knew that you had a ton of crashes whilst building this, and that's got to be so frustrating. And like my main comment would be, well done for just getting a course out. Like, having been through 200 odd on one of my projects, I, I know how debilitating that can make it and how frustrating it is. Um, let alone what you had, which sounds even worse, where it was for crashing kind of every 10 minutes or so. So great work for getting something done. Um, and there's loads of real positives to it. I love the environment. I'm kicking myself, I can't remember the name of the course. Um, then, and there's a lot of stuff I really, really like. I can tell the holes you did early on because they were much, much better. Um, and they were presented really nicely and they had that level of, of quality control that I'm used to with your courses where they present really well sculpting's great and you could tell the ones that you were kind of doing with the crashes because the sculpting's less good and the idea I guess was idea one because what heart do you have to redo a whole one you know it's going to mean another couple of hours on top of what you would have already budgeted because of the crashes um bunker sculpting went in places I do think greens conceptually are still an issue the use of false fronts, the use of quirky runoffs, like the understanding where forgiveness should be. Like you'll have seen it on a couple of holes through there. Um, I'm going to say 14 was one. That short par four with like that tiny little ledge was an example. There, but there were others. Um, 
as well as the, like the, the little troughs and obviously the false front as mentioned um there's the odd hole where it's just you need to blow up and redo and you've got to i'm sure you recognized 11 whilst you were doing it was just not it um and it's things like that and taking even taking the cc stuff aside like the cc just for me exaggerates all of those decisions because if a beginner can't play it then that's really pointing out the basic like kind of underlying flaws but 11 i think was an example of one that should have been redone um, i do think i probably would have used some ob in spots but it didn't seem to cause me problems and i found ravines more than most people will have done um, I thought the back-to-back -back fives worked pretty nicely. Um, I probably would have liked one more par five on the bat. Um, or a longer four. Like It felt like a lot of the back was, yeah, kind of as it seems, like a lot of 400-odd yard holes. And a little bit more variety there would have been good, I think. Um, I'm looking at the red tees. 450... Yeah, this was a candidate to be longer. I thought twelve had potential there, um, but there are like these three in a row. It's like how are we making those completely different things like that. Um, and when you do go back to back fives, what the five par fives are really good for is varying and having a long approach in to a shot, which doesn't necessarily force you to hit a long approach. So by spacing those out, you'd have had more variety here, whereas by putting them back to back, you're basically increasing that repetition and taking and increasing repetition here for example so if you look at your lengths of holes i think you had issues whilst rooting it where which we could have picked up like 582 580 these three are all kind of the same distance these three are all in a similar sort of drive and pitch vein i, I think we could have varied that a little bit more um, otherwise there's not much more to tell you that you don't already know i think like planting obviously could have been more detailed and i know the look you're going for and um have accomplished in spots but obviously there are spots where it was just unfinished um but i think for your next course do still go down the cc vibe i think this is one of the most like this is the most enjoyable jack course i've played in a long time um because it's not overly pinched it's not artificial difficulty you've allowed more space um in places where we'd want it there is fair way around the greens there are angles you can get to um whereas previous courses uh was it the tobacco lot one there was a lot of angles you just couldn't ever reach and it just it was very punitive over and over again this is much more friendly and keep keep doing that sort of stuff and taking the things you're working on here and hopefully the next one doesn't crash anywhere near as much um Hopefully that helps. Uh, best of luck with the contest and see you again soon.